to gather together and worship Him. It has been a wonderful service this week. I have been standing in for Pastor Lowell. I think he was the best to present on American Bible prophecy because he comes from there. <laughs> so he should be able to update us what's going on, which we don't know because we may not know everything. Nevertheless, we have the word of God and we can know something. Amen. And this week we have seen a few things. I am hopeful that we are going to see something more today. My wife told me not to introduce her. <laughs> are you disagreeing? I said in my heart, if I introduced you yesterday and then this morning I don't, people will think that we quarreled last night. <laughs> but we didn't. So for that matter there, please stand up and wave to them.
speaking religiously. Okay, interesting. Uh huh. Democracy. democracy. How did we get democracy in the last <laughs> No, this is the problem of people who have read too much. <laughs> they even go ahead of the question. I see, democracy has already been said, okay. Allah, yes. Christ like character. Okay. The opposite of the lamb. This beast begins to speak uh, to, to, it looks like a lamb, but later on speaks as a dragon. How do we know the dragon spirits? What is the spirit of the dragon? What does it always do? Huh? It has? It does evil things. Okay, what else? Dragon, dragon. Yes. It makes always makes war with the saints, uh huh? Persecutes every time, uh huh? Uh huh? Yes, sir. Yes, you're the one. Yes, you. Destruction. The dragon always destroys. So when we go to Revelation 12, we find the dragon battling, battling, battling with God's people to the end. Isn't it? And every time the dragon meets with God's people, persecution, sometimes death. Okay? So the Bible predicts that the United States of America, in short, will turn from being a land of liberty to begin behaving like where they came from. Where did they come from? From Europe. What used to happen in Europe? The Pope was the king of heaven and earth, and every king was bound before him. And if you don't bow, the armies of the world are supposed to take your life off. So the Bible predicts that America, the land of liberty, is going to lose the principles of liberty. Now, yesterday we talked about the image of the beast. I'm just revising a little for those who didn't come at all. Image of the beast. Image of the beast. Which question should I ask? Okay. Which chapter did we go to find something that already happened in history that helps us to understand what will happen in the future? <laughs> oh, Daniel 3. So then which chapter do we have which will happen in the future? <laughs> Daniel 3 we have, but that is history. Now future, which chapter is that? <laughs> Revelation 13. People are good. Okay, so the image of the beast in Revelation 13 is made by which beast? The second beast which represents which country? Yes. United States of America. When will the image of the beast be formed and how is it formed? Ah. Now there is no ABCD. There now we want to see. We are not separating wheat from chaff. <laughs> there are two steps in the forming of the image of the beast. You are ready? Point number one. I see many people say yes, so let's call us in. Let me see. Uh -huh. The United Churches, which churches? The leading churches in, uh, in Uganda. In where? Okay, so that's the first step. What do they unite on? Common doctrines or common points of faith. Okay, so when we begin to see the leading churches in America pushing for unity, not based on Bible doctrine, but on common points they have on their faith, we know something is cooking. Next step. They will now go to the government to ask the government to push their agenda, isn't it? And those who refuse will be persecuted. I have finished what I studied, and I think that's enough for you till Jesus comes. But anyway, uh, have you ever heard of the Sunday law? Or how many have ever heard of the National Sunday law? Okay. Will it affect your standards? Okay. Where will it start from? From America. Then it will come to Uganda. When people obey the government by worshipping on Sunday as commanded by the churches of the day, who are they really worshipping? The dragon is being worshipped, isn't it? Yes. We said yesterday that any worship that is not Bible based is given to God. The, the, the devil himself, God does not accept false worship in anyone. 
So whether you're worshiping a human being or a dog or a demon, all that worship goes to who? To the devil. So that's why Revelation 13 verse 4 says that they worship the dragon and they worship the beast. So if the dragon gives the beast the power and authority, if you worship the beast, the worship goes to who? To the dragon. Okay, so we stop that now. Today I'm not going to go into very difficult things. Whenever I hear of the National Sunday Law, America is there, the purpose is there, it scares many of us. Until we are told, don't study those things because they are very what? Scary. Even you, I know, sometimes if you have reflected, you feel scared. I'm going to scare you more and then comfort you more than I'm scared. <laughs> you think it here. What am I going to do? And then after scaring you, I will comfort you. That's what I'm going to do. That revision was necessary for some of us. Now, if it was not that I have preaching this afternoon somewhere, I would release you at home. But because the preaching somewhere is beginning earlier, I will release you just before. <laughs> Let us pray. Oh, Father in heaven, I thank you this Sabbath that we can worship together. I pray that what we are going to discover may help us to be ready for that which is coming ahead in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So my subject this uh, Sabbath is this. Preparation for the what? Fight for Christ. Many times we know what's coming, but how we prepare or what we should do, we don't know. And so this is what I want to focus on. And what I'm going to share with you today is a culmination of my study of the Bible and the spirit of prophecy for some years. And whoever will take these points down and commit to do them, you don't have to worry about what's coming. If you will take them down and commit to do them and follow these steps that I'm going to list today, I pray that you will be that person. Our theme quotation is... Uh, afternoon is coming from Acts of Apostles, page 431. I mentioned the word spirit of proxy because I'm going to use it a lot today because it will make some things simpler. Let's read that yellow part. Let's begin together. God desires his people to prepare for the soon coming. Read the next one. Prepare for of you are prepared for this exam that passed and you really executed it well. You are very ready. Okay? Prepare, not unprepared, it must all do what? Even if you are not prepared, the exam came. Did it come? Yeah, it came. And those only who have brought their lives into conformity to the divine standard will stand firm at that time of test and trial. God desires you to prepare. But if you don't know how to prepare, then <laughs> what will happen? What does God want us to prepare for? Christ. The soon coming crisis. What is the crisis then? Let's go back to what we studied yesterday, Revelation 13 verse 15. The Bible says, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both feed and cause as many as do not worship the image of the beast should be what? Killed. Should be killed. What is the Bible predicting in short? The Bible is predicting that there's going to be some matter on coming up in the future. Now, Ugandans understand matter more than where I come from because you have Uganda matters. You even have a day you celebrate them, even though you're not interested to be one. Don't you? Yeah, you celebrate Uganda matters. Are there people who are going to be killed for their faith in this final war, spiritual battle between the beast, the image of the beast and God's people? Let's read Revelation 20 now, verse 4. Revelation 20, verse 4. If your neighbor is sleep, tell him the crisis is. <laughs> How can you do this? <laughs> the crisis is what? And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them, read that one with me, which souls of which people? 
that what? He held them for what? The witness of Jesus, number two. For the word of God, number three. And they had not worshipped what? The beast, number two. Never his image, never received his mark upon their foreheads or in their And they leave, they resurrected, and they reign with Christ for how long? Question, are there people who are really going to be killed for refusing to worship the beast in the last days? Do you have some people in the Bible who are for their faith? Who do you know most prominently? Who do you know most prominently? I'm talking about this one. John the Baptist, okay, and you people read the Bible. Now in the last days we have three powers. We have three powers. We have the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. The dragon is the devil and all pagan religions combined with the beast, which is the papacy of Catholicism. The false prophet is this second beast of Revelation, which is America. But why do we call it a false prophet? Looks like a lamb, but then speaks as a man. How did Jesus say the false prophets will come? They are dressed in sheep skins, but in reality, who are they? Having us walls. You see the characteristic of a false prophet in America? Yeah, so we have false Protestantism or a false Protestantism coming together with the papacy, together with the kings of the earth, persecute God's people. Now let's bring it back to the time of John the Baptist. How many people are united to take the head of John the Baptist? Herod, the king, isn't it? Aha, uh -huh, representing the dragon there. Then who, 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 who wanted that head really? The wife, what was her name? Herod? Herodias. Is it? Okay, Herodias represents the papacy. Once your head. Uh huh. And who, 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 who was used to achieve it? The daughter of Herodias represents fallen Protestant churches. That's just interesting for you to know, but it's not part of what I was teaching. I just wanted you to know this. Selected messages for free. When this groundwork is to take place in the battle prior to the last closing conflict, those yellow ones, I told you I was going to scare you very much, and then I will put you very a lot of them. Many will be, number one, many will flee for their lives from cities and and many will be what? Martyrs for Christ's sake in standing in defense of the truth. Hmm. Which one do you choose if you are given opportunity? <laughs> choose one, choose one. Yeah. Let me see those who choose uh, prison. I see one, 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 two. Prison. Okay, who, who chooses to flee to villages? <laughs> okay, mothers, mothers, mothers. Hey! We only have two mothers here then. Yeah, I will not choose. <laughs> yeah, I will not choose. Do you see what's coming? Yes. This is the crisis. Now, how many of you are ready to die? Yeah. You know, if they came with guns here and there, they said, if you are a Christian, stand here. If you are not, leave now. <laughs> you know how this church will be empty today? <laughs> Life, life, your camera, even the camera remains recording our body. <laughs> but that's what's coming. Nevertheless, having told you what's coming, I want to tell you how to prepare for what's coming. I want to give you hope and encouragement that we do not need to fear. The God who gave victory to his people in the past will give victory in the what? In the future. Who came up with that fire at last? The Son of God, who is Jesus Himself, and the fires of Christ. They came out alive. Now, when we talk, we talk about the last crisis, there are three categories of people that are going to be meeting this crisis. First one, are these seven dead Adventists who are going to be allowed to rest before that time? Maybe you want to be allowed. Them. God is going to lay some of us to rest because He knows we cannot manage. Yes, He knows we love Him. He will lay us what? 
So if you see some wonderful people dying in these last days, don't cry a lot. Know that God is doing some business and you don't know. We have lost precious people by the way these few years. Precious young men. But I look back and I say, ah, there's a reason. There's a what? The second category, uh, those who are going to meet the crisis, but they will not be killed. They will go through it until the end. And they will see Jesus come a second time. They will even long for death and pray for death, but death will not come. And because it will be harder to live than to die, death will be easier. But God will say, no, you know death. You are making me. Yeah, in that category. Those are the ones who got the 144,000 and they make it alive. The third category are those who are going to be martyred for who? For Christ. Both of them are important. For all three are. Now God knows which one he will choose for what? For you. Because he operates with us at personal level. When the Christian is looking forward to the duties and the severe trials that he anticipates to be brought upon him, as we look forward to these things, <laughs> because of his Christian profession of faith, it is what? Human nature to contemplate the consequences and shrink from the prospects. Generally, I fear. Sometimes even when I preach about the beast, I pray a lot on that day. <laughs> But am I ready for persecution, you know? Just in case they come for me. <laughs> it is human heart. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with being fearful. But then she says, and this will decidedly be so as we near the close of our history. So the closer we get to this crisis and we see the churches in America uniting and we begin to see America beginning to persecute, we get more scared. We may be encouraged. We may be what? We may be encouraged by the truthfulness of what? God's word. That Christ never failed his children as their same leader in the hour of their trial. Has he ever failed? I told you yesterday we are going through it not because we are faithful, but because God is faithful. Are we together? God is what? For we have the truthful record of those who have been under the oppressive powers of Satan. We have a record. We have Daniel. We have Joseph. We have Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We have men who have stood for God in the past. Faithful record. And that his grace is according to their days. God is faithful who will not suffer us to be tempted above what we are able. If he says the prison, he knows you are able. If he says the matter, he knows you are able. We have to be. We have Peter. He is taken to prison on Friday, I think. And Herod decides by Monday I'm going to cut off his head. There's that story in Acts 12. And then the church decides to pray. And as the church is praying, the angels come and say, <laughs> We don't care about gates, about locks, about what we enter where we want. They enter. They say, Peter, why are you sleeping? Time to leave the place. This man was tied one hand to this soldier, one hand to this soldier, one hand to this soldier, one hand to this soldier. How do you come up with that place? And then he's in the innermost prison. There are other prisons, but for him, he's a security threat. The end is says, let's go. And when they reach the outer gate, it opens without the key. You think the digital technology came recently? They opened it from God. Things are just sensing you and opening sensors. Now, did Peter die? Did Peter die? Later, but did he die that time? God intervened. Was he not same guy who was not the Baptist? What happened when he was taken to the same prison? Maybe he lost his head. Who do you want to be? Which God do you want to worship? The God of John the Baptist or the God of Peter? And then you wake up and you find the two of them are the same. <laughs> How come he chose John the Baptist for his head to be chopped? And then for Peter, at that point, he released him. Because he knows how he deals with each of us. Are we together? Our us is to live for him and put our lives in his, in his hands. He will do what best pleases him. 
Can we be faithful if I'm facing the choice that I'm supposed to be martyred today? I don't know. I can't say that. The real question is, will God be faithful? That was the kind of answer. Yes, he will. Amen. Amen. Yes, he, he will. Now, this is the reason why I find courage. I don't know how to encourage you more than discourage you. The disciples were not endowed with courage and fortitude of the matters until such grace was needed. Did you hear that statement? When they came to arrest Jesus, who, 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 who is that who denied him three times? Three times, isn't it? The man just feared for himself. He didn't know what to do. I saw you. I said, please. I don't know that man. I've never met him. Even the a woman just scared me to die. A woman. You can't take God. He has to die. A few years later, after receiving the Holy Spirit, the brethren said, Did we tell you to stop preaching in the name of Jesus? And they said, We know this one has a record of denying his Lord. He even denied his Lord back then. He will deny him. See him and threaten him. So they threatened Peter. And Peter looks at them and says, This time around, you're wrong. You're what? We would rather obey God rather than men. If you want to kill us, kill us. But we have a king of kings and a Lord of lords, we obey him. What had changed in Peter? Peter had realized before that he trusted in himself so much. And he failed. This other time, he learned that God is faithful and they had been filled with the Holy Spirit. And God had given them courage and fortitude of what? They were ready to die. Who gives that courage? God gives it. Did He give it to them before? He gave it when they need, when they needed it. Are we together? So when you're being arrested, God gives you the courage you need for the arrest. When you are being killed, John the Baptist, God gives you the courage to stand for Him. It is up to God, not up to who? To us. Those men who are just people like us. Have you ever thought about it? That's why people get scared by little things just like you. But then, when we are under the mighty power of God working in us, because we have chosen Him, God begins to do things that the world looks at and says, Who are these? Are they human beings? What are they? Because we have let it go for God. If God did it through those men, they are not angels, He will do it through us. Are we together? Yes. We need to be strong in knowledge of that. God does not give us the spirit of matters today, for we have not come to the point of matter Are you understanding what I'm saying? So it is natural to be fearful, but when that time comes, God will give you that spirit of what? The matters. And you'll be able to make it. So why has God told us what scar we are? The Bible says in Proverbs 22 verse 3, A prudent man foreseeth the evil, and then what does he do? He hides himself, but the simple, the foolish, they pass on, and they are punished. God gives us wisdom for all scar to prepare. We have come to a time in our church when the message that defines who we are and the warnings God has given us are scorned and rejected by the Sanhedrin and also by the church members. Whether you believe the National Sunday Law is coming or not, doesn't matter. What matters is God's word must be fulfilled. Are we together? Whatever someone will feed your mind on and you begin to reject and neglect the prophecies, that doesn't matter to me. What matters to me is that if God is true, whatever he has said will take place, will take place. And the wise will study and be warned and will hide themselves. The foolish may mock and reject and be lost. Psalms 27 verse 5. For in the time of trouble, what will happen? He shall hide me in his. We sing every day. 
Union with the Holy Spirit. Uh -huh. Union with Christ. It was this fellowship with the Savior. It is this fellowship with the Savior that will enable God's people to endure to the end of the time of trying for us. Is it clear? That relationship and fellowship with God every day. Till God says, I know you, my, my daughter, I know you. You mine, I know you. We'll be together. Daily in the morning we begin the day together. At night before you sleep, you talk to I know you, I know you. We'll be together. Some of you, you know me. <laughs> when you start and end your day and go through your day, mm -hmm. another quotation is selected, Messages 399. We have many who profess the truth who will be overcome because, why? What's the reason? They don't know each other. They profess the truth, that means they're Seventh-day Adventists, but they're not acquainted with Christ. They cannot distinguish his voice from that of a stranger. There is no dread of anyone. There is no, don't fear that anyone will be going down, even in the widespread apostasy. Who has a living experience in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? He said, Don't fear that someone in this time of persecution is going to lose their sight of Christ and faith. No, don't fear if they know Christ. Not in head, but by experience. If they have been with him. Let's read on. If Jesus be born to it, then, if the character of Christ is shining in us, if the Holy Spirit that work within us, the hope of glory, the illiterate, as well as the educated, can bear the testimony of our faith, saying, I know whom I have believed. Whenever they talk about the Sunday law, I think of my mother and my grandmother, that they don't really understand these things the way that I, I do. My grandmother cannot read. And if she, her life is extended, and this time comes, me, I know, I go to the internet, I check, I see, I have read spiritual prophecy. How about my mother and my grandmother? What's going to happen? Listen, if they are genuinely suffering God, genuinely seeking Christ daily, even if they don't know what is going on in the world, exactly in which place, <laughs> their knowledge of Christ by experience will help them to stand for the right thing. Amen. That's it. So what they need to Covered in Christ. That doesn't mean that you should remain in Egypt. Eh, eh. You, 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 God wants you to study because He has given you what? The power and the opportunity to study. So my first point, read that again. I hope you are. Can I add something arrogant? <laughs> Never have a relationship with son of man before you have a relationship with the son of man. <laughs> you didn't get it, did you? Is there a difference? Yes. Never have a relationship with a son of man. Most of them who are here with shining faces, wonderful suits, before you have a relationship with the son of man. Who is the son of man? Jesus Christ. That is the relationship that is going to matter in last year. Point number two, be a witness for who? Be a witness for who? For Jesus. My question is, who told the Nebuchadnezzar that the one in the fire is the Son of God? Remind me. Remind me. Who told the Nebuchadnezzar that the one in the fire is the Son of God? Remind me. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abed. They had shared with him about who? And so when he saw, he studied that yesterday. They were witnesses for Christ in Babylon. The Bible says in Revelation 12, 11, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to the death. How did they overcome? By the blood of the Lamb, number two, by the word of their testimony. Now, many of you just want to overcome by the blood of the Lamb. That's what you want. So we sing every day, there is power, power, wonder working power, ready to love, now not is here. The remnant, the what? Stop singing now. The remnant had to overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of the testimony. Some, some of them are here, expect to overcome.
or come alone by the blood of the lambs. Without making any special effort of their own, and so that God has been merciful in giving us the power of what? Speech. What is it to be used for? He has given us a time and we are accountable to him for how we use it. How many have tongues here today? Countless <laughs> people. We should glorify God with our mouth, speaking in honor of the truth and of his unbounded mercy and overcome by the word of our testimony through the blood of the Lamb. Amen. How are we going to overcome? The blood of the Lamb. Secondly, the word of your testimony. You must tell others about Jesus. There's no shortcut here, friends. As we are moving into the summit, be a part of it. As you live with your roommates, be there to testify by your lips. Tell people about Jesus. You know, in heaven, the stories that are going to be there are not. How many boyfriends did you get? <laughs> Boys in who's that came asking for a relationship from you. Hey, but I can tell me I was a celeb. Even the ten people test in heaven. <laughs> Sorry, my friends. The story is going to be like this. I thank you so much, my brother. I'm here because of you. I've never seen you. Say no. My brother came to Makere. He was your roommate. Aha. Uh -huh. And you shared with him about the truth. Uh -huh. He came back home and he brought so much problems until we chased him out of the family. And then, and then he, the things that he told us were going to happen in the last days began to happen and I knew he was right. And I turned to Jesus. And now I'm here. Do you see those links? Are you establishing those links? Share with some overcome by the word of your testimony. But how again do we share with people? How do we witness by? A Christ-like character. The Bible says in Matthew 5, 16, Let your light so shine before whom? Men, that they may see your lesson study guide. That they may see your choir uniform. What are they supposed to see? That they may see your good works and who should they glorify? Father in heaven, do people see your good works? Or you're just a good priest? When an argument comes up in class, they know who will win before it even <laughs> proceeds. They know. Advent is a lot. <laughs> if it's an advent, it's not arguing with them. We know that these people, they, they have turned the Bible upside down. It is not only by preaching the truth and not only by distributing literature that we are the witness for God. Let us remember that a Christ-like love is the most powerful argument that can be advanced in favor of Christianity. Amen, church? Amen. What is the most powerful argument you can give to win people to Christ? Christ-like love. And that a cheap Christian character works more hard in the world than the character of a world player. God said, it is better for you to just be in the world and don't come to church than to be in the church and pretend that you're of the church but you're not of the church. They look at you, you look like a chameleon Christian. They are such Christians, chameleon Christians. When they're in church, they fit it very well. You would say, hey, wonderful. This one is about the other 44,000. She's making it. When she is in the club, she is also fitting very well. They say, hey, you got, where did you learn these moves? What? Can we come and tutor us? When people are painting their faces for birthday party and wedding, ah, they are the first, they even know the strokes here. Yeah, sure. When they come to church, they say, wow, oh, God's people should be clean, you know, don't even paint, you should be uh, uh, very pure, like the budget is okay. I'm stopped, but you know the way you're looking at me. Point number three. If you're going to make it, you need to be a man and a woman of what? A man and a woman of what? Prayer. A man and a woman of prayer. Let's go back to the crisis in the days of Peter and Jesus. Jesus had this crisis. Luke 22 verse 41 says that he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast and he kneeled down. And what did he do? Jesus prayed. Jesus knew that there was death coming. And he knew he was weak. <laughs> he 
went to look for strength in what? In prayer. And there appeared an angel unto him from where? From heaven, doing what? Strengthening him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat was as it were, great drops of blood falling to the ground. My friends, if Jesus knew that the crisis was going to be hard, he prayed hard. Did you hear me? He also prayed what? Hard. He needed God. He went and looked for him. And what happened as a result of that prayer? Who came down? Who came down? Who came down? An angel came from heaven. And what did the angel do? Strengthen him. Yes. Are angels down or they are still there? They are there. Will they strengthen God's people? Do they strengthen those who are sleeping or those who are praying? May they find someone in whose that is How about Peter? Before I talk about Peter, when the people came to arrest Jesus, Peter was Jesus' name. And they have run the opposite direction, even behind the tree, somewhere, me. But when they just come to arrest Jesus, he stands from prayer. See the next thing he does. Jesus therefore, knowing all things that should come upon him, knowing the persecution, knowing that we're to speak on his face, knowing what the Bible has said, what did he do? He went forth and said to them, instead of running away, those who are coming to arrest, he walks towards them. Where did he get the courage? He had been strengthened. And then he said, Who seek ye? Who do you want? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus said unto them, I am he. <laughs> they didn't even know him, so I think he might have pointed to someone else and said, Shit. <laughs> he said, I am. You're looking for me, I'm here, I'm ready. <laughs> and Judas also was there with them. Now look at Peter now. What did Peter tell Jesus? Peter said unto his hey, Lord. <laughs> What? I'm we are ready to go with you. Where and where? Both in prison and two. Hey, when you talk about the coming Sunday, look for me and what? Lord, we are ready. And uh, be careful with that attitude, not mine and yours. It is dangerous to think we are what? We are ready. Peter thought so, by the way. Now, when Jesus was praying, what were they doing? <laughs> The Bible says he came to his disciples and he finded them what? Asleep. Asleep. What did he tell them to do at that time, by the way? To pray. What did he find them doing? And how many times did he find them sleeping? Three more times. And he said to Peter, what? Peter. And he's addressing Peter specifically because it was Peter who said, for me I'm what? And then he said, Peter, <laughs> could you not even watch with me for an hour? Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. Then he says to Peter again, The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is what? With it. I think I was telling Peter something. In your heart you think you're strong, but you don't know how weak your flesh is. When you see sword is coming out, Peter, something will happen. Now I know it says, It was in sleeping when Jesus bade him to watch and pray that Peter had prepared the way for his great sin. Sleeping. Do you think the Adventist church is awake today? We have a sleeping church. <laughs> People no longer value prayer. Have those hours in the garden been spent in doing what? Watching and prayer. What would have happened, my friends? Peter would not have been left to depend upon his people's strength. He would not have denied his Lord. History would have been different. Many of us, it would be written like this after we are going to heaven. That lady was good, but had she taken time to watch and pray, she would not have been on her. Now, this is what makes me sad. Peter, for him, the other second one, chance, isn't it? Yeah? But in this final of crisis that is coming, do we have a second chance? If we fail, we know how. Fail, because this one is deciding the destiny of heaven and earth. Then, watch and pray. Ladies and gentlemen, watch and watch. Be a man and a woman of prayer. 
Take time with Jesus. Wake up early in the morning. Take time with Him and pray. A canary is a big place. If your roommate is making a lot of noise, go under some tree. Talk to Jesus. Nathaniel was under some tree when Jesus met him. Do you remember that story in John chapter 1? In a private place, God can see us. And as we commune with him, he reveals himself to us. And when the crisis comes, we are ready. I love this one. Though their enemies may thrust them into prison, yet the natural worlds cannot cut off the communication between their souls and Christ. Mm -hmm. The prison will be as a what? never even been to the palace. But the prison we be as a palace. Why? For the rich in faith, they dwell there. And the gloomy walls will be lighted up with heavenly light. As when Paul and Silas prayed and sung praises at midnight in the Philippian dungeon. Amen. Amen. But are these things encouraging you or discouraging you? If prisons can turn into palaces because the rich in faith dwell there, then I'm willing to go. <laughs> I'm willing to what? Because Christ is going to come. Just like we came to John in the island of Patmos, I'm willing to go. Be a Bible student of prayer. Number four, be a Tyra Bible student. Did you write that already? Be a Tyra Bible student. You know, I'm not telling you some things that are hard to do. I'm telling you things that you know. I'm just reminding you. <laughs> Those who are going to make it in the time of travel are not extraordinary people that God has brought from us. There are not people on YouTube who have many followers. They are just common people who are faithful to God in their daily lives. Amen? That's it. I'm not teaching you anything new. Be a Bible student. Psalms 119, verse 11. Thy words have I hid in my form. Are we reading this together? Thy words have I hid in my form. That's why I might not do what? Those who hide God's word in their hearts will not sin against God. The word of God becomes a fortress and a refuge for them. Why should we study God's word thoroughly? For two reasons. Number one, we are going to be brought before councils and courts to explain this unique faith that we have that is making us to disobey the government. So we are going to be brought before these governors and councils and presidents. And many people will have nothing to say or do. They will say, Elder uh, Singh used to tell us, they will look at us, who is Elder Singh? Oh, he's the other prisoner in the other cell. <laughs> And they will say, his time has not yet come, so we want you to tell us yourself, not let us say. Jesus said, Beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils, and they will scorch you in their synagogue. And you shall be brought before who and who and who? Governments and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and against the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, when you are arrested and brought before those people, take no thought how or what you shall speak. Don't let that trouble you. For it shall be given to you in that same power what you shall want. Speak as waiting. For it is not you that speak, but the spirit of your father that speaks in you. Amen. You say, ah, that's not an easy thing. The Holy Spirit will just jump and chew up. As the start flowing. Ah, Holy Spirit, find me. Jump. Holy Spirit. you now. <laughs> I disappoint you. We should become acquainted with the Bible. You need not to be surprised that God will flash the knowledge that you have obtained half by diligent searching of the scriptures into your memory at the very time when it is needed. But if you let the precious moments of professional time to pass on WhatsApp and Twitter, and this one is called what? Tick, 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 tock. <laughs> and the other one is called uh, hmm? the one of pictures, pictures and Snapchat. Huh? <laughs> the other one for pictures. Why is my profession? Insta. You know, you know where you've been going. 
And you neglect to fill your minds and the minds of your children with the gems of truth. If you are not acquainted with the words of Christ, if you have never tested the power of His grace in trial, listen, you cannot expect that the Holy Spirit will bring Christ's words to your remembrance. He, he said, hmm, hmm. Some of us use God as their tool of success, you know. When exam time comes, they come to church when the title has been released. They come and say, we need special word, eh? Prayer. For God to give us up. The Bible says God is not mocked. Whatsoever man sows, that shall he also reap. If you need to study your books, even if you pray for two weeks fasting, try, try. There will be not one paragraph for us in the exam. None, none. Even if you speak in tongues without studying or without telling you, you will speak in vain. The people will look at you. It's the same with the final Christ. If we don't take time to take to study the Bible, don't think the Holy Spirit will come and say, okay, my sister, I know you are busy. Now it's time for me to remind you. The Holy Spirit reminds us. He doesn't just put in us what we didn't have before. Number two, we need to be thorough by the students because deceptive miracles will be watched. Uh, of course. Miracles are going to happen. It's so original when you see it. <laughs> that even you may be tempted to say, but for sure, these people may have the power of God. <laughs> huh? The Bible says they can make fire to come from where? From heaven. And he says, I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and of the beast and of the mouth of the false prophet. So this is this and holy trinity in the last days. And they are the spirits of who? Devils. And what are they doing? Working miracles which go forth to the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of the Lord Almighty. So this is talking about that final crisis. They are working miracles. Who is being targeted by those miracles? false Christ and false prophets, and they shall show great signs and wonders, in so much that if it were possible, who shall they be seen? Who is the devil targeting? God's very enough, God's remnant people, using miracles. Don't say, ah, for me, <laughs> I can't be deceived by those fake miracles. Okay, you wait. Wait until they arrive. The last great delusion is soon to open before us, the Antichrist is to perform his marvelous works in our sight. Marvelous works. So closely will the counterfeit resemble the truth that it will be what? Oh, if you are saying you think I think it will be possible for me to know, it will be impossible to distinguish between them except how? By the Holy Scriptures. By their testimony, every statement and every miracle must be what? Tested. None. How many? None. None but those who have fortified the mind with the truths of the Bible will do what? Will stand through the last great conflict. None. To every soul will come the searching question. Shall I obey God other than man? The decisive power is even now at hand. The question is, are our feet planted on the rock of God's immutable word? Are we prepared to stand firm in defense of the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus? Are we? Are we? Christians should be preparing for what is soon to break upon the world as an overwhelming surprise. How should they prepare? How should they prepare? And this preparation they should make by diligently studying the word of God and striving to conform their lives to its you something that are new? No, nothing new. Just that God is saying, those things you've already known, why don't you take, make yourself committed to them? And you're going to make it. And your father, be a man and a woman of what? Faith. Be a man and a woman of faith. Notice something with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego with that fire. What did they tell them that night? If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery world, furnace, and He will deliver us out of your heart of him. What do you call that? Hey, they believe God was able. Is our God still able? Yes. 
And because of that, Nebuchadnezzar said, God sent his angel and did what? Deliver his servants. Which kind of servants? That trusted him. So this crisis revealed their trust in who? In God. The crisis does not develop faith. It reveals the what? The faith. Let's read another one. Do you remember Daniel? Where did they throw him? In the dead of night. Now when the king removed him, the king was exceedingly glad for him and commanded that they should take up Daniel out of the dead. And so Daniel was taken up out of the dead and no man of heart was found upon him. Why? Why, why, why? Because he believed in his what? What do you call that? Faith, my friends. Why am I bringing this here? I'll just put it for you now like this. If for the sake of an exam in this university, you don't believe God can help you and give you success in life, that you have to disobey God to obey the university, then you don't have enough faith for what's coming. But if you have faith to trust that if I can obey God today, God is able to give me a job even without graduation. You don't understand. God is able to feed me even without my degree. God is able. God is it? But yours may not be. The mind is, I'm with this God of Sandra, Krishna, Kandabel, and Daniel. They he trusted in his God. He had so much trust that he was willing to break the command of the King of Kings of this world to obey the command of the King of Kings in heaven. Because our lives are in the hands of that God. Not this one. I'm not calling for rebellion, I'm calling for faith in God. <laughs> We are going to succeed. We are going to need what? What are we going to need? Faith. The season of distress and anguish before us will require a what? A faith that can endure what? Very nice. Number two. That that we don't want to read. I know we love food, isn't it? Even fasting for two hours is a big problem. You're always carrying some biscuits in your pocket just because. Waiting for five hours before another meal is too hard, isn't it? We are going to need a faith that can <laughs> endure hunger, delay, weariness. A faith that will not faint even though it is severely what? Dry. And the period of probation is granted to all of us to prepare for that time. So do we all have revision time, preparation time? Yes. But will all people be ready? No, don't go down. God will give you wisdom. Those who exercise, but how much faith now? If we exercise just little faith now, we are in the greatest danger of falling under the power of satanic what? Delusions and the decree. This is not Sunday law of the conscience. If we exercise little faith. And even if they endure the test, if you become strong, you say, I'm not going to worship on Sunday. Landed to deeper distress and anguish in the time of what? Trouble. Why? Because they have never made it a habit to trust in God. Trusting in God should become a what, my friends? A habit. The lessons of faith which they have neglected, they will be forced to learn. At what point? Under terrible pressure of discouragement. Listen to me. We are in the school of Christ. But some of you are not attending lectures. We, didn't hear you very well. we are in the school of who? Christ. But the lessons of faith which we have neglected to learn, we are going to be forced to learn them. And it is going to not be easy. So, how does Christ teach about faith in this school? Can I tell you how it happened? By passing you through some tough situations. He allowed your sponsor to die when you were just finished the first year. And then you were like, hey. I still have three more to go, but the one has what? Hey. How oh, you are supposed to go to America? All of a sudden, COVID. You are even posted to the village. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Why are you going to 
COVID says no going anywhere, all planes are grounded and you have to come back to that same village and apologize to people and ask them to support you. Because God is shaping your character and you trust in him. Oh, your parents dies when you most need them. What are you going to do? That is the time to go on your knees and say, Lord, when my mother and my father forsake me, the Lord can take care of you. I trust in you. Okay? Before that time comes, God is going to put seven diabetes in his glasses, and his glasses are easy. This one, I call them rugs and cups. God has rugs and cups. Rugs, random continuous something. Random assessment test. Cups, continuous assessment day. So God gives you random ones. You had a good morning, you're walking through the road, something terrible happens. That's a rat. God has thrown at you random assessments. We just see your character and help you have faith in him. And then sometimes it just gives you cuts. Continuous, my friend. You finish with this one, another one. You finish with this one, another one. And God knows what he's up to. And you're there weeping and crying. You listen to me. The person who passes in cuts and drugs is most likely going to pass in the final exam. The person who has failed in these small exams is not going to make it in human. Are you understanding how God works? So every day God has put us in the school of life, the school of Christ, and there are lessons of faith we should be doing what? Learning, my friend. Are you learning? If because of just an exam you sit in a lecture and get a grade, then what way is your faith? Where is it? If just because of a, a boyfriend you leave child, then why are you worshiping? Ah, that boy was really, really showing me the way of God now he has left it. Yeah? <laughs> so you leave church because the man also left it. Then you're going to leave heaven with you with the way we are seeing. God is bigger than all my problems. All of them. Amen. Even the worst issue, even if I was sent to university and it has failed, God can take care of me. Amen. I don't have to compromise my faith so that I can have an easy life. There are lessons God wants to teach you, teach me every day about faith. How are you? You're going to leave campus and just start working. After all this sweating we have done here, yeah. and we just walk on Sabbath and we say, but I will know the car was entering to the beach. Yeah. You pushed the car! You pushed it! You saw it! You even turned it near the beach! And then when you saw it, it's not falling, you pushed it, shit, you fall. <laughs> the book of Daniel teaches us that even if it means down, Die believing in the world. That is safe. That's what we need. We need faith here. And me there, I see myself. I have been to. So, you know, God every day is passing me through some classes. The problem of God is this one. There is no going to the next class without finishing the previous one. <laughs> there is no something called a poverty party. No, oh, children are not supposed to repeat class with God in repeat. So the first time God puts you in a relationship and you say, Lord, I'm so sorry we had sex. It was not supposed to be God. I forgive you, my son, my daughter. I forgive you. You're sorry. Okay. I'll give you another way. And the same test does what? Comes again. You say you're sorry. You never did again. Then back to the same class. <laughs> and you did the same mistakes, holding hands around. You pray for darkness, a little darkness comes, you together two of you, and you do the deed. Okay? You do it some on Sabbath, and then you come to church, you hear the preacher preaching, you say, Lord, I'm really sorry, so sorry. I didn't know it was this bad, I shouldn't do it. Okay, God says, I've forgiven you, my son. It's okay. You did it, yes, I've forgiven you. Next semester, three papers on Sabbath. <laughs> What the say is that you say it, that's what you need, eh? and you remember everything. Eh? Yeah, free now. Okay, let's see. You never skip God's lessons of free until you pass the way. Then you're ready to move to the next step. Where are you with your God in the lessons of free? If you think you can go 
compromise today and then move on tomorrow. God will repeat it. Just to prove to you that the only way we are making it is until we learn God's lesson. I think for many like this that many the Adventists are going to lose their jobs in the last days. Not because God hates them, but because God sees they will not have the faith they need for what's coming. So God brings a crisis at work place. When they have nothing that their parents are no longer supporting them, they have left campus, they have just found their own, their boyfriend is some other thing, some other side, the job did this and that. And now even your job is at risk because of the Sabbath, and you're like, Lord, why are you pressing me this far? Lord, this is the only thing I have. And God says, this is not the only thing that you have. You have me. Amen. You have who? Me. If I fed the children of Israel in the wilderness, where there was no farm for 40 years, and there are over 1 million people for free every day, I can feed you, you're just one person with one stomach living in a small house. Can he? We are in this world to learn about having faith in God. I'm stressed on this point more than others. Because this is where we fail most of us. Whether it is you getting into a wrong relationship, it's because you don't have faith to wait for God. Whether it's you cheating in the exam, it's because you don't have faith that even if you fail honestly, it is better to fail honestly than to pass this honestly. You don't have faith. A God can even redeem your failure. Go to the other church, young people. May God make you men and women of faith and prayer and Bible study and everything that we have talked about at the point number. I am not dying. We shall return and finish the rest. Yes.